Hi everybody, and thank you for joining me today. Let's see, find a short piece for this. I am so close to another zero, woo! -hoo. So this color, I have this, and then you can see there's another one right on the edge of the diagonal there, so I'm gonna probably do it today because that way I get another zero. Woohoo! Finally get my second one. Got the first one, like I said, around 40%. And now we're getting close to 70% uh, before I got another. Be able to pack that away. Yes, one more, but I gotta work my way over to it. Because as usual, I like to try to not close anything in. Although I did do some of that up here earlier. There was just so much confetti that it became more work to avoid closing stuff in. I couldn't be bothered at that point. Yeah, I see where some people, they're really strict about their rules. Like I've seen where people do the diagonal. It's like a perfect straight line. They never go outside. Even if there's only like one stitch of that color just outside the diagonal, they don't do it. But I did not have that much discipline. Okay. Oh, geez. <laughs> My scissors are getting really dull. I like shredded that piece instead of actually trimming it. There we go. Uh, I need to find my sharpening stone. I have one for knives. Sharpen up my scissors. I did try, someone said you fold foil a few times and then cut through it. It will sharpen your scissors. I tried that, but it didn't really seem to make that much of a difference. So I don't know. Okay, I think that is also end it off here I think my problem was last time I didn't hold the thread quite taut enough as I was uh, cutting it so it kind of shredded like that instead of cutting cleanly well and my scissors are a bit dull Okay. Yeah, and actually I'm getting really close to the uh, the pillar there, which always goes quicker. And then we will have two passes left. I'll have to look back at how long it takes me to do a pass across. I think about three months. So if that holds true to form, it would be about six months left until I get this done. Which is, I was thinking, end of the year. So, we'll see. Oh, look at that. I went to the wrong row. <laughs> as soon as I threaded it, I went, wait a minute, that's not the same color. No problem. I will just switch to that color. Yeah, I think I will have to look at my stats, but I think I did the math that I do about 10,000 stitches a month. So we do get there. Because, yeah, it's I average around 300 per day. It depends, because, of course, there's some days we're getting 100 as a struggle because I just didn't have time and it's a high confetti area. And then there's other days where I get, you know, 800 done because it was, I had all day to stitch and it was a simpler area with less color changes. So yeah, I think it averages up to about 300 a day. So yeah, I was saying my friend should come over more often because I got like 600 stitches done that day. 
and it was sort of a medium confetti area, so yeah, that was fun. She stitches too, so we just chatted and stitched for hours. And now that it's finally summer, more time. Oh my. That one is really there. <laughs> Didn't want to go across the back without coming up through to the front. It's kind of a delicate balance to get it to go through the backs of the stitches without coming up too hard and coming up through the front. So, alrighty. Yeah, so we should reach the zero in this session. Woohoo! Oh man, it was funny. I saw a meme earlier. I'll have to send it to my son because, yeah, we're in that Rickroll battle <laughs> where it had, um, you know, things we didn't do. And it said, start the fire, shoot the sheriff, things we did do, the deputy, you know, um, or shoot the deputy. And then, you know, things we will do, things uh, we will do for love, you know, things we did, built this city. And then it had um, things we won't do that. And then it said things we will never do underneath. And then it was give you up, let you down, run around. So yeah, I saved that. I'm going um, I'm gonna to catch my kid with it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because um, if he doesn't have his phone on him, when I text him, I always know when he picks it up because I hear a shriek, Mom! <laughs> it's just become our thing. But I always say he started it. Ooh. Yeah, at the end of the year last year, he kept getting me and then saying, oh, it's the last Rick roll of, you know, 2021. But of course it never was. And then, yeah, of course, on New Year's Day, he managed to Rick roll me again. And it's the first Rick roll of 2022. <laughs> oh. oh, goof. <clears throat> kind of reminds me of, you know, this pre-digital age stuff, there was a family who, um, it became their, their family joke to keep passing this, this yellow shirt, um, back and forth between each other. Like one of them got it as a gift and didn't like it. So they regifted it to the, you know, to the gift giver. And it became a joke of how they hit it and sent it back and forth to each other. There was one who said they put it in the stuffing of a chair. So it was there for years till they decided to reupholster the chair. And then there it was. And um, there was one, so the mom embroidered on it, I belong to Pat. And so Pat took it and added some letters so that it said, I belong to Pat's mom, you know. <laughs> it became a long-standing family joke. I thought that was quite amusing. I thought that was a shorter piece. Let's see if I can find a short one. The very last stitch of this color. Oh, they're all kind of a, I think that's the shortest one I have. So, so then I get to pack this envelope away. Woohoo! Another color down, like 89 to go. Something like that. There's like 89 to 91 colors in this pattern, I think. So, Yeah, I got to hit the 50% mark in one of my uh, Stitch With Me sessions. That was fun. But the best is hitting 100%. That's certainly fun. <clears throat> Okay, so, ta-da! 
We have another zero. Woohoo! 33, 48. So that was in my working tray. I can now pack that entire envelope back into my master set. Woohoo! This was still threaded, so even though it's kind of going into the next diagonal, I'm going to do this so I can end it off because I think this piece is super short. There we go. Yeah, there's, I wouldn't be able to get those last three stitches out of this piece, so I'm not going to try to stretch it that far. Oops, there we go. Now it's uneven. Not going to be able to get that back on the needle. Oh my gosh, yeah. See what I was saying about these scissors? My gosh, I really do need to sharpen these up. Well, I'm going to set these aside because I have another pair. That's closer. Close by, I could grab it. And I think they're a little sharper. Yeah, I think my son was in cutting cardboard with the other ones. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he likes to build little um, models of cars out of uh, cereal boxes. And he calls them his crash test models and he crashes them. Oh, it was really funny. He had his little um, Pete the Cat um, toy in there. It's like about you know, this big. It's a really tiny little thing. It came with um one of his um, Pete the Cat book orders at school. And I said that um, Pete the Cat is completely stoned because he's got this, you know, his eyes are half open. He's got this like goofy looking grin on his face. And my son takes offense to that. And uh, so I was joking when he had him in the car to crash test it. And I said, well, of course he crashed it. He's been driving impaired. He's stoned. <laughs> and mom, he's not stoned. Stop saying that. Uh, but then his reaction is so funny. No idea where he gets that from. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, yeah. It's funny. They said when you, you think to yourself, wow, my kid is just like me. And then you think, oh, no, my kid is just like me. <laughs> yeah, he got caught um, reading in class instead of paying attention. I caught him reading after bedtime with a flashlight under the covers. I said, yeah, you know, if I had any doubts, I took my own baby down home from the hospital. Yeah, they're gone. He, he may look like his dad, but his personality is a mini me. Okay, got more than one thread of this part. Okay, Let's see which direction. Yeah, I see what I planned to do with these. This one's longer. So, got two paths here. If I didn't have two threads parked, I would have probably added another anyway, so works out good. Yeah, so we're supposed to have a bit of a heat wave this week, although still not too bad. Yeah, I won't complain, though, because I've got friends in the States who are just dying. Yeah, 
yeah, Canada uses a Celsius for our temperatures. So I said, I think people think it's a lot colder up here than it actually is because like 100 degrees Fahrenheit is like 37 Celsius, right? But people who are used to Fahrenheit will see, man, there are 30 degrees in the summer. It must be freezing up there. Yeah. Yeah, I like it around 22 Celsius. And I'm very sensitive, I could tell. My husband once turned it down one degree without telling me to try and save some energy. And I was sitting on the couch wrapped in a blanket. This was in winter, just like saying, why is it freezing in here? And then I go and look at the thermostat and I'm like, oh, it's set to 21, not 22. And my husband said, well, I didn't think you'd notice. I said, you know, it's been 20 years together. You should have known I would notice. I definitely always notice that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, super senses are not always fun when you can't turn them off. Okay, let's make sure I'm parking in the correct spot. Yes, so I was against the grid line and then this one needs to go here. There we go. Perfect. Okay, and I'm thinking there's going to be two paths for that. Let's see, where am I? That's this one here. Hmm. Well then, I may actually do some stuff out of order. We'll see. Because that thread's actually long enough to sort of carry all the way back up. All right, let's see what we'll do. Like I said, there's not rules, just guidelines. <clears throat> Occasionally, I'll do stuff out of order if it just is too much trouble to do it differently. So if that had been a short piece and not long enough to sort of keep carrying this way, I would have added another. But since it's not, I care more about getting the most stitches out of my thread possible than I do about following my guidelines. So, yeah. Oh man, I had to fill up my car today. Ouch. I had about a third of a tank. Yeah. It was 50 bucks. Ugh. My car is not very big tank, so it was like 35 liters and 50 bucks. Ouch. Yeah, it was a $1.80 a liter. <clears throat> So that's, um, that's, uh, like 7.20 a gallon for those of you who do it in a gallon. So yeah, cha-ching. Okay. Yeah, making sure I'm still in the right place. Yeah, the way these colors are kind of going this way also makes it kind of harder to um, not close stuff in. That's just the way it is. So yeah, what I'm gonna do, oh, I see, okay. Any further down? No, okay. So what I'm going to do is not do things exactly in order. <clears throat> I can be flexible, at least in some things. <laughs> I wonder what's going on out there. It's banging noise. Somebody must be renovating. Yeah, the other day I definitely couldn't make a video because uh, somebody was using a chainsaw. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, our um. Our neighborhood is kind of old enough that we're all at the point where the bigger, older trees are dying and have to be have to be cut down so that they don't become a hazard. Yeah, we did ours a while ago because um, they planted it close enough to the house that we were worried the roots were going to break the foundation. So yeah, we ended up cutting that one down. Yeah, my husband actually did it himself with his brother's help. 
and uh, his brother carved his initials into the stump with a chainsaw. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, before we finally had that removed, we uh, called a company and they brought this like grinder machine. It almost looks like a big chainsaw, but it's a machine and it kind of sweeps back and forth and grinds it down into basically mulch. And uh, they missed one of the big roots though. It's still there, unfortunately. But yeah, unfortunately, because um, we had to do that because that stump sort of was right where the water would come down off of the gutters. And then it would flow over onto our neighbor's drive, which is, um, it was unpaved at the time <clears throat> and it was washing their driveway away. So yeah, as I said, we don't want to be, you know, the jerk neighbors. So <laughs> yeah, we went and had that done. But then unfortunately, when they were grinding that down, they accidentally cut our neighbor's internet. <laughs> yeah, they went to the wrong place and they got the underground cable. And then the cable company was, or the, yeah, the internet company was gonna take like, so I'm gonna do these out of order. It's just the way it's gonna be. It was gonna take like, you know, two days to replace it. My husband does that kind of stuff. So he just goes, never mind. I have a cable, here we go. And hooked it back up for them. <laughs> Because, yeah, we felt bad. I mean, we didn't do it, but we paid the guys who were doing it, and they cut it, so we kind of felt it was our fault. Yeah, and these days, you know, nobody can live without internet, practically. It's kind of funny because I'm old enough that I grew up in the era before everything was connected to the internet, and yet sometimes even I forget what it used to be like. You know, when you wanted to look things up and you had to go to the library or maybe a friend's place that had an encyclopedia, you'd ask your parents, but I mean, a lot of times they didn't know and were just repeating old urban legends they'd been taught. Yeah, no Wikipedia. So yeah, I did stuff out of order. So some people I've seen like to do this sort of all the time kind of cross country in the diagonal and that totally works too. Like I've said before, I don't think there's any one right way or even best way. The best way is the way where you enjoy yourself and you're happy with the results. And I think you could fudge this more than you can with some other hobbies, like with knitting. Yeah, yeah, if you make mistakes, they're going to show. But even then, there are different ways of forming the stitches. Like they, um, I learned to knit English style because, well, my grandma is, uh, is British. So, um, yeah, I didn't know there was more than one way. Or sometimes they call it throwing, where you hold the yarn and you bring it over the needle each stitch. And then there's, um, continental or German some people have called it, but a European way where they actually hold the yarn coming off the other side and sort of pick the yarn through the stitches instead of manually looping it each time, which apparently I've heard is faster, but I tried it and I couldn't get even tension, so I just went back to my way. Eh, I'm not too slow. And again, it's not about speed. It's about enjoyment. Plus, I can't knit for extended periods like I used to. I get soreness in my hands and I think if I was going even faster I'd probably be able to knit less time overall so yeah I mean part of the doing these hobbies is to fill your time right so yeah yeah I learned all sorts of techniques after I joined Ravelry if you are a knitter or a crocheter it's a great site I recommend it. Okay, so I'm gonna park this here and go back to my not closing stuff in once I get this sort of all filled in. Yeah, well, it's supposed to rain again this week, so I guess if you have people wanna do their outside work, they better get it done today. Oops, in fact, we were supposed to have a huge storm, but luckily, it mostly passed us by. We had some thunder and lightning at night, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. Because, yeah, there was a tornado warning for some cities near us, so I was really glad it didn't get too close to us, that's for sure. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can't win, right? There's always some kind of natural disaster looking to take you out. When I was a kid, I lived on Vancouver Island, and so it was for us, it was the fear was earthquakes. They told us that we were due for the big one. Jeez, oh, as far as back as elementary school for me, so the 80s, and uh, they haven't had any. So I guess when it does finally give, it's going to be pretty bad because there's a fault line right there. We had a small one the year my husband and I were um, engaged. I remember um, I was sitting in the truck while he ran in to get something and I kind of shifted in my seat and sort of the truck started moving. I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm not that heavy. I didn't move around that violently. Why is the truck sort of doing this? And then I look over and all the other cars in the parking lot are doing this and there was a big tower and it's doing, you know, like this. And by the time I registered what was happening, it had already ended. And then, uh, yeah, the DJ comes on the radio and says, what the beep? I think we just had an earthquake. I was like, oh, that's what that was. <laughs> Ooh. And yeah, my, my husband said that um, he's walking down the stairs and all of a sudden it's like clunk. He goes into the, the wall and tries to stand up, kind of clunk, goes into the other wall as he's going down. So it's like, what the heck? And then realized, oh, it's because the ground's moving. <laughs> but yeah, it was a really minor one. My dad said he was driving at the time and it was so minor he didn't even notice it had happened. So... He said he pulled into the gas station and uh, the clerk's eyes were like the size of dinner plates. You know, I said, did you feel that? It's like, feel what? Because, <laughs> yeah, it was minor enough that in the truck he didn't feel it. So, yeah. So that's the only one I've been in. But, yeah, I remember us doing earthquake drills about three, four times a year. You had to hide under your, uh, your desk at school and count to 60 after they said that the shaking had stopped. Of course, it wasn't actually shaking, but uh, yeah. Because uh, aftershocks before getting up to leave, I think we did earthquake drills almost more than we did fire drills. Yeah, so my son has been born and raised here on the prairies, so he's never had to do one. So I was telling him about that. And my husband is a few years older than me, and he's old enough, he says he remembers the... Um, the uh, nuclear nuclear drills. Like, yeah, hiding under your desk not going to do a heck of a lot, right? And he says he even remembers one teacher saying that, yes, you know, get under your desk, get into the, you know, um, crash position with your head between your knees and kiss your butt goodbye. <laughs> he got in trouble for saying that. But, yeah. Because, yeah, the case of a nuclear attack, that's probably not going to do much because yeah he was born late 70s so you know when the doomsday clock was you know two minutes to midnight or whatever I don't even know what it is now but yeah yeah we had in my history class we had to take a popular song that sort of um from the era we were studying which was um 60s, 70s, you know, era, and find a popular song and then sort of analyze the lyrics. And um, I did, uh, I think I did Imagine by uh, John Lennon. Um, somebody did All Around the Watchtower by um, Hendrix. And then somebody did one, I can't remember who it was called, but it was called Protect and Survive. And then, yeah, at the very end, it was talking about nuclear war and then it said at the end and with, with a little muscular pressure you can kiss your arse goodbye and then they got in trouble for that. <laughs> lyrics because that was a catholic school so yeah uh. yeah somebody did the grateful dead and yeah this was in the days before itunes though so it wasn't uh wasn't as easy if your parents you know didn't own a copy I was going to do Fortunate Son by Clearance Clearwater Revival, but uh, I couldn't get a hold of it because yeah, this is in the days when it took like 20 minutes to download a picture online, right? So downloading a whole song was just not a thing on a dial-up connection. So uh, what ended up I ended up doing was um, one of my sister's friends, his dad was actually DJ, so he just made a copy on a tape for me to use for school. So, 
Yeah, it was actually, it was quite funny. He was, um, he was DJing a party or dance or something, um, on, uh, December 31st, 1999. So the whole Y2K scare, if you're old enough to remember that. And so right before midnight, he played, it's the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> uh. just for fun. There was actually somebody my parents knew. His wife was really, there was a couple they knew and the wife was really, really worried about Y2K. So her husband being a big prankster, he snuck down to the uh, fuse box and at midnight turned it all off and she's, oh my God, it's happening. She's freaking out at that. Wait a minute. The neighbors across the street have lights. In. You jerk. <laughs> oh. Yeah, my um my sister-in-law actually flew <clears throat> on December 31st, 1999. And she said the plane had like five people in it because everybody was so paranoid it was going to fall out of the sky. But uh <clears throat> So yeah, she said when they got on there and they the um you know the uh attendants were doing their their safety thing, you know, here are the exits. And then afterwards they said, well, you may have assigned seats, but just sit anywhere because, you know, <laughs> it really doesn't matter. The place is empty. So, uh, yeah, she said, I got a really nice sleep on that, uh, on that, uh, flight because it was so quiet. You could stretch your legs out all the way. So that was light. It was lovely. Yeah. So, <laughs> hmm. okay. So now I'm back to not closing stuff in. As if that never happened. <laughs> yeah, I was actually not feeling well on um, New Year's for the for it turning over to the year two thousand. So I barely stayed up till midnight. Yeah. I had just graduated high school the uh, previous summer, yeah, and I had just started a new job actually. At, you know, Christmas time, it's very very tiring. So, uh, yeah, I barely stayed up till midnight. Said Happy New Year, Happy New Millennium, and went to bed. <laughs> of course, there'll be somebody who will tell you that the New Millennium isn't exactly until two thousand one, but whatever. <laughs> It turning to you to a thousand was a pretty big deal. Yeah, actually, I remember the whole worry about Y2K. So I was curious and I, I tested my computer and uh, it the first test I did, it's set to the year 2000, no problem. It's like, okay, there's no smoke coming out of it. I guess we're good. You know, I set it back to the uh, actual date. And then when it actually turned over to the year 2000, instead of mine turning to year 2000, it went to 1980, which was just kind of weird. And then after that, I just manually changed it to year 2000 and that was it. It was fine. The only problem I remember there being was at the time I used public transit and you would have to buy yourself a new bus pass from one of the authorized um, distribution places. Mine was usually at the, um, I bought it at the drugstore because um, they gave me points for buying it there. And so, you know, if you're gonna give me 5% back in, point, in points for free stuff at the drugstore, I'll take it, you know? I have to buy it there anyway, right? So it was there or like the library would carry it or whatever. And that was the only Y2 clay glitch I really remember happening was it they didn't get printed I don't know maybe the computer they were using to print it didn't like it or something and so for the first five days you couldn't get a new bus pass so they actually were honoring the um December bus passes until there was a grace period until you could get the new one so yeah that was pretty much the only glitch that in my computer thinking was 1980 for all of you know five minutes <laughs> were the only real glitches I remember happening
yeah, what was it? Somebody said they had a student who was writing a paper and they wrote in the late 1900s. It says, well, now I'm just offended. Because, yeah, I was born in the late 1900s. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, I'm going to get a short one for that lone stitch by itself. I think I have. I do. Woohoo! Oh yeah, it was funny. I saw one recently. A bunch of, um, you know, Gen Z, the younger kids, discovered um, Metallica because of a viral TikTok. And somebody said, you know, well, don't make fun of them. It's not like our generation didn't discover Bohemian Rhapsody because of Wayne's World. <laughs> uh, I think actually it's pretty awesome. Kids discover a an older band for the first time. That's fun. Let people enjoy things, right? Right. Okay. Okay, I think if I remember correctly, this is just enough for these two. Yeah, that's perfect. That's why I chose to do that. And then that longer one that's lower than this will carry on for other stitches there. Okay, actually I can pin stitch these here because Yeah, so they're saying it's kind of wild because, yeah, people my age are the right age to remember before all technology took over, but also be versed well enough to use all that technology. Okay, let's see how long this piece is. Oh, that's pretty long. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back down to the starting point. There, and then that'll be into the next one. Yeah, you can see this color. I'm nowhere near zeroing out this yet. Still almost. 6,000 of this color. That is a lot. Okay. Okie doke. Oh, here we go. Oh my. <laughs> if I could somehow grab the thread, that would be great. Alright, so this is a longer carry, but still not too long. It's about an inch. That's about the furthest I carry, so. Two, three. Yeah, that's still within an inch, so. I will do that. Mm-hmm. 
is this still threaded? Yeah, okay. Didn't have bothered doing uh, this last stitch here, but since it's threaded, I will. Oh my goodness. <laughs> there we go. Wasn't pinching it hard enough. Just didn't want to uh, trim it down. And I don't lick my thread anymore. Broke myself of that habit. going to do. Come on. Yeah. No. <laughs> if this will cooperate, which it's not. Oh yeah, these scissors are definitely better than the other ones. Okay, so even though it's parked in the upper right, as always, I'm actually going to do it as if it was parked lower left. Do these three. Then do those two. And I'm actually going to park it right here. Can you guess what I'm doing? <laughs> And do that one there because then I can do this bunch in a row and I didn't close anything in even though earlier in the session I did do that so not a huge deal sometimes it's just not worth the trouble of avoiding it kind of twisted and not lying flat at first so just making sure I really like these colors in this area right here very pretty and actually I can do that one there too that one there. Perfect. Oh, 
finally cut my hair today. <laughs> I had really, really long hair in high school, but can't stand it anymore. I guess sensory issues get worse when you get older. It gets too heavy and my neck gets sore and I get to the point where it's always touching my face and neck. So I'm always tying it back and then my scalp gets sore. So yeah, it's like, okay, time for it to go. I don't think I will ever grow it long ever again. Yeah, I had it, like, down to my waist. It's a lot of work. You know, drying it took hours. And like I said, my hair's pretty thick, so it's very heavy. Gives you neck strain. And also, when you're uh, pretty short like me, having that much hair can almost be kind of overwhelming for your frame, I find. So, yeah. I had it chopped short when I was, like, 19 and I I never went back to long since this cannot be bothered I'm also not very good at styling it so <laughs> wash and wear it is okay Yeah, I think these are going to be some of the colors I might be using on the peacocks when I do the Marvelous Garden. When I finally get to that one, I'm still doing the grinning on that piece. I just have not had the time with all my other projects. I will get to it eventually. I think my next new start will be a uh, Legend of Zelda one. It's a smaller one that's like 55,000 stitches and I think that will be after this one I like a smaller project to sort of get that get a completed one a little faster a little sooner payoff. These blues and greens are so pretty. I ended up, I think a lot of these colors too were left over from when I did the, um, the one that's in my avatar. The uh, Make-A-Wish painting with the Northern Lights. Yeah, these colors were used a lot. And they're so pretty. I do like my big projects, but sometimes a, a smaller project that you get done quickly can be a nice break, too. Okay, 4.14. Oh, pardon me. My gosh. Mm. There we go. Make it cooperate.
Yeah, I'm gonna feed you later. It's not even one yet. You can stop grinding your teeth at me, piggy. Ugh, terrible sound. She's very spoiled. <laughs> yeah, they do that when they're upset. There was one time when my son was littler when we first had her and he he fell against her cage and actually pushed the top in a bit. And she's freaking out. And I said, you know, did, did you squish her? I had to make sure he hadn't actually landed on her. And he says, no, mom, I only squished her a little bit. <laughs> but thankfully, yeah, he squished the cage, but she wasn't in that spot. She just, she just got really scared. So, yeah, she was grinding her teeth for like a good couple of hours after that. I took her out and had her in my lap to sort of calm her down. And plus I was, you know, feeling around to make sure nothing got injured. And she didn't do any squeaking or squirming, so she was just scared. But yeah, yeah, she ground her teeth for a good long while once she got over that. But yeah, now we kind of joke about that. I always squished her a little bit. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> I think he was more scared because he started screaming because he was afraid that he hurt her. And yeah, I think that upset her more. Because they're quite skittish little creatures, so... Okay. So I'm just going to check. Okay. We have two threads of this color, but that is okay. <clears throat> Can work out just fine. over to this corner here and work my way back out. Oops. <clears throat> if I can find the right spot that is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> was the one I pulled out not too long ago. <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, let's see. Bit of a end popping up. There we go. Yeah, actually, this uh, got quite a lot done this time. Woohoo! I always like when that happens. When I exceed my expectations. Okay, so I think I'm going to wrap it up here because I think I just heard my husband's car pull up. So, uh, 
yeah, we will call it a day there. 145 done. Nice. So uh, as usual, thanks so much for uh, joining me here, and I hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye!